This demonstration video, we're going to apply Agilent System View to the design and verification of an 802.11ac wireless LAN system. If you're new to System View, it is a system level modeling and scripting environment that accommodates several languages, connects to baseband as well as RF EDA hardware design flows, and connects to wideband instruments in a consistent concept to verification way. It unites both baseband and RF in a unified design flow. In this demonstration, we're going to look at the W1917 wireless LAN library. This library provides signal processing blocks and about a dozen pre-built test benches to help you design and verify wireless LAN systems. The new 1917 library provides support for all the modulation and coding schemes, including all the new wider bandwidths and modulation formats, coding, framing, as well as MIMO and spatial mapping. It also provides the ability to do 1, 2, 4, and 8 antenna MIMO, receiver baseband algorithms with timing and frequency synchronization, as well as decode all the way out to bits. So if you input bits, code them, and transmit them, you can decode them and get a bit error rate. In addition to bit error rate, you can also measure EVM and the output of the signals created with the W1917 library are in fact compatible with other Agilent applications such as the 89600 VSA software. With System View, you have the freedom to create a complete signals generation scenario. Here we have a bit sequence in through a coded transmit source, through some channel modeling, through a coded receiver, and bits come out and they're compared for bit error rate. If I open up this coded source and the receiver, I can see that I have access to the internal block diagrams. So let's go look at this. Here within System View, I've already got a, a, an 802.11ac example, and if I look in the parts selector, you can see the 50 or so parts that I can place on a schematic, and I can build a schematic made out of these parameterized parts. If I double click on it, you can see the various parameters. And if I open this particular model, here is the entire signal processing chain. And at any point, I can tap out signals and dump them to files, dump them to instruments, and compare them with test vectors from my algorithms. In fact, if I want to customize this phi, I can replace the Agilent reference design with elements of my own algorithms. So taking a cleaner look at that signal processing chain, I can inject my own MATLAB code, C++, or even fixed point representations, and dump test vectors to files or to test equipment and compare at any level of instantiation my, um, the validity of my algorithms from floating point through a co-simulation and even into hardware with um, instrument connectivity. This is how System View supports model-based design. Now here in this scenario, I'm looking at the effect of an interferer on the overall system coded bit error rate with error correction turned on. I can add my algorithms for synchronization and equalization and beam forming. I can also add RF impairments such as phase noise, RF nonlinearities, the effects of A to D and D to A converters, filtering, and more. At the end, I'm able to measure um, constellations, EVM, bit error rate, and the total performance of this physical layer communications design. As a system architect, I can go from simulation through hardware instantiation to real hardware and be able to dump test vectors out of this block diagram directly to test equipment and get them back. In this way, my system architecture tool also becomes my verification cockpit. For RF component design, there is even more capability. I can take this situation where I, I create format true waveforms and place in the simulation block diagram uh, several RF model sets. One is ADS um, models. Uh, and co-simulation such as X parameters or power dependent um, S2D and P2D parameters. I can have a direct co-simulation with Golden Gate. I can export a fast circuit envelope model which preserves frequency dependence, power dependence, as well as memory effects for any analog mixed signal transceiver. And it, I can also create virtually unlimited numbers of MIMO channels and look at RF performance even if I haven't taped out yet. I can also co-simulate directly into the Agilent 89600 VSA 
and measure fine signal quality with an independent IP reference that is consistent from hardware measurements as across to, to simulation so that you compare apples to apples. And finally, I'm able to interactively explore the space by tuning and adjusting and scripting uh, regression suites over every possible parameter of both the phi as well as the RF and impairments. Let's take a look at how that is used in the actual system view environment. Okay, we're back here in the system view environment, and here's my pseudo-random bit source into a coded 11AC um, transmit source in the 160 megahertz MCS mode. And I am going through a compressing power amp model, which could be an ADS simulation or a X parameter or a number of different representations. And what I'll do is turn on the Agilent 89600 VSA source and hit simulate. And the VSA pops up, and I can see the constellation and um, the EVM measurement being made on the simulated signal. If I come back to uh, System View and simply make both programs visible, I can also interactively tune this value and watch the value change and see the EVM the integrated power band with the spectral regrowth and the constellation change while I slide the tuner. So you can see the ability to verify RF components is quite simple for a system architect uh, by taking representations out of the analog or RF EDA environments into the system environment. Um, they, run, they can run much faster and you can do much more detailed analysis and verification. In addition, many systems today are interference limited instead of noise limited, and so it's possible to combine many different signal sources into one simulation in order to do interference studies, and each of these can of course be scripted and swept. So if I have stored waveform files, active system view subnetworks, my own intellectual property or a standards reference, I can take those and combine those separate signals with a new component in system view called the signal combiner into a single coherent data flow data stream that is time aligned with a common sample rate. This is used for interference studies for cognitive radio, for receiver verification, and also for collecting signals for download to test. You've seen the 160 megahertz um, mode of 802.11ac. I can also, in System View, um, simulate directly into an Agilent VSA or download to real uh, wideband ARVs that can make signals on a multi-channel receiver and display apples to apples the same parameters being measured. In this case, we were looking at a laptop with System View. Um, downloading into wideband ARBs into a multi-channel receiver. There are instrument drivers for a wide variety of uh, test equipment um, platforms in order to create faded MIMO scenarios and look at time alignment and other impairments. Another application is wideband stimulus response modeling. Many engineers are looking at digital pre-distortion for a number of RF benefits, and for these, it's helpful to be using real 802.11ac waveforms. However, digital pre-distortion requires oversampling in order to correct for these sidebands. That drives bandwidths even wider, and Agilent is able to provide these with a new family of wideband instruments. The M9392A modular platform is able to handle up to 250 megahertz wide. It's even possible for system view to control RFEDA environments in a co-simulation mode and actually predict the correctability of amplifiers and wafers that have not even been um, fabricated yet. System view is able to anticipate, accelerate, and help you achieve your 802.11ac wireless LAN system designs. Thanks for listening, and if you'd like more information, please visit www.agilent.com/find/esoft-systemview-videos and try a copy.